Let me tell you a story of a young man in the Old Testament of the Bible. His name was Jonah and he had the purpose of essentially freeing the city. Um, I don't remember the name of it. Uh, freeing a city from sin. And God called him to do that, but he didn't want to do it. And he tried to flee from the word of God over the sea. And he got on a boat and that boat drove for a couple of days on the big sea away from the country he was in and away from the city he was supposed to go in. And God called him again and said, go to this city now, for it is your purpose to free it from sin. And he didn't do it. He didn't follow the word of God. And therefore, God sent a blizzard. I think it was a blizzard or a storm onto the boat. And the boat was short before breaking. It was about to break on the waves. And the, all the people on there were short before drowning. And Jonah said, throw me all like overboard. And let me die because I have kindled the anger of the Lord against all of you. And they negotiated with him and said, oh, well, we can't do this. We don't want to kill you, blah, 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 blah. But the storm didn't end. And Jonah then said, as soon as you threw me off board, the storm is going to end. And they did it. They threw him overboard and... The storm ended the second he touched the water, right? But he was already like on the decline because he couldn't swim. And then a big fish, a whale came to him and put him in his mouth. He didn't eat him, right? Whales don't eat meat. If you don't actually know this, they suck in the water. And then the thing that's on their teeth, that's what they eat, right? The small little plankton stuffs. And he put Jonah in his mouth and he went as far as that city who God called him to free of sin. And then the whale stranded on the strand. The whale died, blah, 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 blah. Okay, sad story for the whale. Good story for us because with the story of Jonah because he went on to save that city from sin and to save that city from being destroyed because God said to that city, you are surely going to die, all of you. And when Jonah came, he went through all of the streets and said, turn back to God for he is near. And they believed him. And they fasted and dressed themselves in sacks and basically repent they they basically went away from their sin they 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 drove the sin out of their gates and the city flourished instead of dying and this is something about purpose and this is something i find my hope in because i see that even if i have my free will God will put me exactly where I need to be. And even if you're sad right now, even if you have lost all hope in your life, which is horrible to have, even then, even in that position, you can find flourishment like the city Jonah went to. They sinned for hundreds of years and then Jonah came. And told them, okay, repent from your sins. Drive them out of your gate. And the city flourished. And this is what you can do. This is your call to start self-improvement. If you've lost all hope in life, it is because you lack purpose. And God will always put you to your purpose. Let me be your Jonah. Let me be the guy who frees you from sin. Because this is my purpose. And I will help you discover yours. I will give you three things you can work on that will absolutely help you regain your sense in life. First of all, meditation. 
Meditation is the best self-improvement habit. It's the most important one. It's the habit everyone who considers themselves on self-improvement does. Everyone meditates who wants to have something big in life. And not just big financially or monetarily or physically, but big mentally. You don't lack resources. You probably live in a very safe country if you can watch this video right now without having the fear of having your door kicked in by 15 masked guys and kill all of your family. And if it's that, I can't help you, I'm sorry, but odds are it's not like that. Odds are you're sitting on your bed, cropped up, and you're watching this video right now in total comfort. So you have everything physically. So why are you sad? Because of your mental health. Your mental health suffered from all the things you did against it. Your mental health suffered from you watching porn. I'm going to exactly tell you how. You see, your mental health is just how capable your brain is of thinking logically. The good mentally healthy choice is oftentimes the smart one, the logical one, that people with bad mental health don't even see. They don't see the book. They don't see the meditation. They don't see these things because they're not smart enough. And the reason they're not smart enough because it's because they lack mental energy. They lack mental energy because their mind is busy arguing with itself. You see, there are two parts of your brain, the old part that hasn't developed since caveman ages and the new part that has just been developed freshly in the last 50 years. And this is fast for evolution. This is your new brain. And so your old brain, while you're watching, for example, porn, <clears throat> says, oh, this guy is a G. <clears throat> He's fucking five women right now. He's achieving the ultimate height of masculine feelings because sex used to be exactly that. It used to be reproduction. And your newer brain, the brain that you can actually hear because your old brain is subconscious. It's so old that it's subconscious. You can't even hear the thoughts from your subconscious. It's just the subconscious behavior that you have shows your mind, right? It's all complicated, but just think of it as two people arguing in your head. The old brain, the caveman brain, is depicted now as a caveman, and the new brain is depicted as a guy in a suit, okay? And the guy in the suit says, no, this guy is watching porn. And the caveman says, no way, this guy just has five, has, has five women as an option, and he can fuck every single one of them. We need testosterone, we need all these things. And then the new brain, the, the guy in the suit comes up and says, no, this guy is watching porn, he's a fucking loser. And this is why your mental health is so bad. One, because you always hear the new brain, you always hear that new brain arguing with the old one. And it, and it says, this guy is a loser, this guy is this, this guy is that, this guy is blah, 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 right? And there are arguments going on inside your head. And the old brain is responsible mostly for your hormone production. So the new brain wants to slow down testosterone production and, 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 and cortisol production and production of all the hormones you would have in that exact situation. And it's trying to argue against the old brain. And unfortunately, you don't hear the old part of your brain, like right, like, like your, your caveman brain, which is telling you you're a G, you're this, you're that good guy, you're this, you're fucking five women right now. Duh, you're, you're, a, you're a gangster, you're, you're this good guy. And you only hear the new brain that's telling you how shit you are. And that's the problem that most people have. That's the first problem. Right? They only hear that conscious new brain arguing against their old brain. And they only hear the one part that's actually talking them down. Plus, it also consumes a lot of mental energy. To generate a thought, your, men, your mind or your brain needs to burn glucose. It uses glucose up to, to think, to make a decision. You will see this with people in marathons. And when they eat something with high glucose, like fruit, their discipline just went up like five points or something, or however in metrics you want to put it, because they now can make that decision again to, no, I'm not gonna stop running. No, I'm not gonna stop. 
that's also a point for you. Eat more fruit and the, so to, to solve the whole you have no mental energy problem, eat more fruit and more healthy stuff full of glucose. And to make your brain shut up, you need to do two things. First of all, you need to stop all the bad habits. And let's stop joking around here. You think right now, oh, what are the bad habits? Shut the fuck up, man. You know what the bad habits are. You know that the bad habit I'm talking about is porn, video games, Instagram, and all those things. Everything you can think of, you know that it's bad for you. And quitting them, you've tried hundreds and thousands of times. But you've never actually like had the right discipline, right? You thought it was about discipline, but you didn't have discipline because your brain was drained. Your brain needed fructose and now you know that hack. And now I'm going to actually tell you how to control your mind. You sit down and you meditate. I could tell you the perfect way to meditate, but that's not what you need right now. You need to start meditation above all. The perfect meditation starter kit isn't learning everything about meditation. It's simply starting to meditate. And you start to meditate by setting up a timer on your phone for three minutes, four minutes, 10 minutes. And you simply, you get a thought in your brain and you think about something, right? And then you eliminate that thought and regain your focus onto a sensation of yours, your breath, your smell, your, your, your hearing abilities, right? What you hear, what you see, what you feel, what you smell, all these things. And you reprogram your focus to focus on that. So now you, you, you know where your focus is. Because scrolling on social media and all the bad habits, they aren't the cause of bad mental health. They are. Guess, guess what they are? They are the symptom of bad mental health. And trying to fix a symptom is like taking ibuprofen or, or some, some pain medication to stop the pain that you have from laying in the wrong position on your bed. Fix the position you lay in, in your bed, and you don't need the pain medication anymore. You don't need discipline anymore as soon as you got over the hill of starting to meditate. Because with meditation, your mental health will incline. Meditate and read. Read something. I don't care what you read. You can read the Bible. You can read some book. I started reading with a biography of Karl Lagerfeld. So it doesn't matter what you read. It just matters that you read. Because reading and meditation are 90% of the work when it comes to self-improvement. If you do, the, do these two habits then you are going to be successful in self-improvement. Then your mental health is going to be solved. And then all the symptoms are just going to disappear. You won't need discipline to quit Instagram anymore. Because using Instagram was just a symptom of your bad mental health. And not the cause. It was never the cause. It's always been the symptom. And of course, the symptom at some point becomes the cause and blah, 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 blah. But to solve the symptom, right, to solve the problem of the symptom, you simply need to solve the symptom. And to solve the symptom, you need to, you need to dig deep and focus on your mental health with the two practices that I gave you today. Read something today and meditate. Read one page and meditate for three minutes. And you're going to have less of a desire to go onto Instagram tomorrow. And you do the same thing tomorrow again and again and again until your problems are all solved. Master your mind.